remember when I was still a little kid, around seven years old, when I watched Star Wars for the very first time, I was completely entranced, not by the elaborate sets, only the attention to detail. It was that no matter what I did, I just couldn't get my eyes off the lightsabers. Beams of multicolored light colliding against each other, slicing through everything they touched. I always wanted one of my own. So one day I asked my dad for one. But what I got was more like a plastic sword and a multicolored, heavy inducing beam of light. However, my childhood dream to own my very own lightsaber may actually come true. Because a couple months ago, scientists at MIT and Harvard discovered a groundbreaking new state of matter that was composed of merely photons and was able to exert a force as though it had a mass. This new state of matter is essentially comprised of light particles bonded together to form molecules, known as photonic molecules. Prior to this discovery, photonic molecules were perceived as being theoretically impossible to create due to light's inherent nature that have no mass and its inability to form internal bonds. This discovery, however, completely belies that belief and can lead to remarkable innovations in the world of science and technology. So when you shine a torch and walk through the beam, do you feel it? Of course not. Light has no mass and no force, so you feel nothing when you walk through the beam. Now take two torches and swing the beams at each other. Do they pass through each other? Yeah, why wouldn't they? Now imagine if all that changed, if you could feel the beam of light from a torch, if when you swung two beams together, they collided against each other, acting like salts and repelling one another. That's exactly what scientists were able to make possible by creating photonic molecules. Whereas most molecules are made up of atoms, essentially protons, neutrons, and electrons, photonic molecules are made up of energy. Photons are emitted from atoms when an electron falls from a high energy level to a low energy level, thus releasing energy in the form of light. Being masses and a form of energy, photons are seen as unable to create molecules and interact with each other. But through experimentation, scientists were able to overcome this belief and create an entirely new state of matter that maintained the fundamental characteristics of life that had a mass. Now, to create these seemingly impossible particles, a long and tedious procedure must take place. The scientists at MIT and Harvard began by pumping rubidium atoms into a vacuum. The red cloud in this picture shows the rubidium atoms that are cooled to a temperature close to absolute zero, equivalent to about negative 273 degrees Celsius, which is the lowest temperature any particle, particle can reach, resulting in it having no energy whatsoever. Now, particles do very weird things when brought down to this low energy state, allowing for such oddities as superconductivity, superfluidity, condensates, and other big and meaningful words. Once the atoms were cooled, the researchers then fired single photons into this cloud of supercold atoms, which excited these atoms as energy was introduced to them in the form of light or photons. This in turn slowed down the photons as their energy transferred from one atom to the next. Professor Lucan, one of the lead researchers, explained that the photons push and pull against each other as their energy is transferred from atom to atom. And this allows for them to exit the cloud of atoms bonded together as a molecule, something thought to be impossible. One of the most important and life-changing things that photonic molecules can be applied to are quantum computers. Quantum computers are very different from the classical computers that we use now, in that all the computers we use nowadays employ binary code, which codes data in either ones or zeros. However, quantum computers use qubits, which can be both one and zero at the exact same time, meaning that they can store a much larger amount of data in an infinitely smaller amount of space. A 30 qubit quantum computer would be more powerful than a supercomputer, and a 300 qubit quantum computer would be more powerful than every single computer in the world combined. What you can see in this picture is a quantum computer chip. This exact one is 128 qubits, four times more powerful than a supercomputer, and it's barely the size of your palm. Now, all this might seem a bit crazy, so let's take an example. Say you wanted to go on a trip to Spain, but you're on a limited budget. So to find the cheapest possible trip, you'd have to find the cheapest hotel, the cheapest places to eat, cheapest transportation, factory and routes, and traffic, etc. Now, if you wanted a classical computer to take all this information and calculate the cheapest possible trip, it would take years, maybe even centuries to do so, as they're only able to process one path at a time. However, a quantum computer on the other hand could take all this information and give you a valuable answer in mere seconds. This is due to the fact that it processes all the information at the same time and not individually like classical computers. So if a quantum computer can do all that, then why don't we already have them? Well, the main reason is that a medium that could transport quantum data was never available. The most viable option was always photons, where their dislike for interacting and bonding was always an inhibiting factor. But now, photonic molecules could solve the problem, as they still maintain the characteristics of light, but have a mass 
thus allowing it to transport information. In this way, photonic molecules could completely revolutionize our way of living. Faster tablets, computers, phones, really anything electronic will come up in the market, allowing for us to solve problems we never thought possible, communicate faster than ever, and store the largest amount of data in a compact, functional quantum computer. Now for the part you've all been waiting for, the part about lightsabers. When you watch Star Wars for the very first time, you immediately notice the lightsabers, and then right after that, you realize how cool it would be to have one. Well, now you might actually be able to own one. Since photonic molecules have a mass and can exert a force when a beam of them is created, they act sort of like a solid, not letting anything pass through them, and being able to push against other objects. So this basically gives us a sword. So how do you get the sword to be as hot as a lightsaber? See, that's where you might have a problem. Since photonic molecules are created at a temperature close to absolute zero, they're incredibly cold, meaning they aren't anywhere close to hot enough to slice through metal, like lightsabers could. However, given time, scientists might find a way to create them at a the higher temperature, or heat them up after they're created, allowing for them to have an elevated temperature. And all our dreams could finally come true, and we can wield our lightsabers together. Photonic molecules can radically change the world we live in. From being able to beam lightsabers to creating lightning-fast computers, the ability for photons, normally massless and unable to interact with each other, to create molecules capable of exerting a force and having a mass is nothing short of extraordinary. The fact that this new state of matter was only discovered now shows that the world we live in is always changing, even when we think it stays the same sometimes. Notions we once had are constantly evolving, and our perception of the world is ever-changing. Innovations in science, such as the creation of photonic molecules, greatly advance our understanding of the world, but our understanding is still finite, and our perception of what is true is constantly being reshaped. Thank you.